Hey, look! Clickbait works! Come on, who'd have thunk it? If you landed on this channel while actually trying to do some real research, I must apologize. Please leave your angry comment down below before leaving. Know your f***ing place, trash! However, if you've ever built an AR-15, you might be able to commiserate with us on the following list of reasons why building an AR-15 is the worst. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and let's start the show. First thing is just trying to figure out what you are trying to accomplish with the build and sticking with that idea. There are so many different ways you can assemble a group of parts and you can create so many different types of products that can all be considered AR-15s that it's easy to get drawn off track. The first thing is just trying to figure out what you're trying to accomplish with the build, then sticking to that idea. Stay on target. We're too close. Stay on target. <laughs> There are so many different ways you can assemble a group of parts that create so many different end products that can all be considered AR-15s that it's easy to get drawn off track. Once you start filling your cart with that sleek, lightweight SBR build that you're going for, it could possibly end up becoming a 15-pound AR pistol with three lights, two backup iron sights, and four lasers. Basically, you haven't even touched your armorer's wrench yet and you're already scratching your head. The amount of confusion coming from trying to decide which parts you want versus which parts aren't going to be called lame by another internet gun expert next week is staggering. Oh, and check this out Mr. Novice AR-15 Builder, look at all those cheap parts you can get on Amazon. Eligible for free shipping on Prime? Hell yeah! And most of these parts are barely half the cost of the same thing on Brownells. You must be some sort of ultra thrifty deal hunting assassin. At least this is the way my cheap-ass accountant neighbor would think. Now, one of the perils of building your own AR-15 is running into the struggle of buying cheap parts for the sake of trying to save money versus buying quality components that will last. This is exacerbated by the cheap Chinese clones of popular components and outright knockoffs. Imagine how silly you're gonna feel when you get what you think are official Magpul parts only to find out the instructions are littered with spelling errors. The sling is too small to fit around your body, and for some reason, they threw in a free t-shirt with a Monster Energy Drink logo across the front of it. True story. No! God, please, no! No! Okay, now you've got all the parts that you need, and a few that you don't. It's time to start putting these things together. This is the moment you've been waiting for as you pour over the issues of guns and ammo lying around the toilet and hearing the internet gun experts give you conflicting information through hours of YouTube videos that you had to neglect your family to watch. You decide to get the upper receiver together first because you can't wait to put that sweet flaming pig muzzle device on your 18 inch barrel. We're not judging. <laughs> I promise. You go to get the barrel secured to the receiver. Now you have your armor's wrench and your torque wrench. But where the hell is your arrow shell? Last AR you built, you bought the big can so you'd never have to buy one ever again. But you can't for the life of you remember where you put it. Somebody must have broken into your house. That's the only answer. Bypass the TV and jewelry and completely glossed over the fine china and your actual gun collection and burgled your can of Aeroshell. Right. Since it's 8pm on a Sunday, you aren't getting it tonight and it's going to be tough to find in time to pick up until your next day off on Saturday. Looks like you aren't building this thing tonight. Maybe at least you can get the lower receiver done. The lower receiver is sort of a modern marvel to those of us who can appreciate the engineering. <laughs> Looking at a fully assembled lower receiver for the first time makes one think, oh, that's all in there. Now don't let that sense of understanding lull you into a false sense of confidence here. The actual crucial components are a Pandora's box of tiny springs that will absolutely launch themselves into low Earth orbit and the fourth dimension with zero provocation at a moment's notice. Trying to assemble a lower receiver for the first time is a low stakes version of defusing a bomb placed by a diabolical supervillain from a 90s action flick. If you've never installed a forward retaining pin on an AR-15 lower before, it might just be a good idea to go ahead and buy a second lower parts kit now, or at least a kit for repair. You are destined to lose this specific spring as well as a few others, which will lead you back to the same problem of not having a 24 hour gun shop right next door to your house on a Sunday night. 
If the damn springs weren't bad enough, when you go to install your gas block, the roll pin that it came with, for some reason, is exactly one size too large to fit into the Jesus hole it's supposed to go in to retain the gas tube. Holy crap! You would think that a company that sells thousands of these products per year would know what size roll pin goes into their own gas block. Nope. Since we've established that you are a slave to the man, there is actually zero chance that you're gonna find the right size roll pin at this hour. You decide that it's so close to the right size you can probably make it work. You bust out the sandpaper, then a bastard file, and you get bold and you try to shrink that pin down in a vise with a Dremel. In the end, you succeed in only making the roll pin shinier, but you feel like your efforts must have made the pin small enough to fit in the hole. You begin to lightly tap, but then you miss hit the pin and send it into the next zip code. Luckily, due to your practice in hunting for springs, you've developed the keen eye of a falcon, and it takes you only 30 minutes to find it. Eventually, after pinching one end of the pin closed, you're able to get the pin started. And, oh my god, it's actually moving. You are a genius metallurgist. You're going to win a Nobel Prize for engineering excellence. Wait a minute. Now it's not moving so well. Well damn, looks like the gas tube is stuck in there, but half the pin is still hanging out. So now you decide to swing the hammer just a little bit harder. And mangle the remainder of the pin that's hanging out of the gas block. This exact problem happened to Eric three times. And trust me, he still hasn't recovered yet. All right, you finally have this thing almost put together. After three months of ordering parts, ordering more parts, and still trying to find that damn spring, then breaking down and buying another spring finally, it's time to enjoy your rifle. At this point, there's always the possibility that you did something wrong and your gun doesn't function properly. Probably because of that gas block with the stupid friggin' pin. But for the sake of argument, let's assume that you ended up with a perfectly functioning rifle. You are proud. You've done something really, really cool. You've built a gun. You can't wait to wave your man card in everybody else's faces, so you post pictures about it on Facebook and Instagram. Time to sit back and enjoy the tidal wave of praise on your ability to grow enormous testicles and possibly start a GoFundMe campaign so you can buy a wheelbarrow to carry them around in, right? Wrong! This is where complete strangers will flock from nations away to tell you why the parts that you bought are bad and you are stupid for choosing them. You hear things like, Keymod sucks now, bro. Oh, and that red dot? That thing's garbage too. You should have gotten my favorite brand. Let's not even begin to get into the things that the AK community are going to say about you. This is the point where you begin to rethink every choice you've ever made in your life. Did I go to the right college? Did I buy my home at the right time? Did I marry the right woman? Better go to the range and clear your head. Wrong again! If you think strangers on the internet can be hurtful in the comment section of a photo, wait till you start hearing the passive-aggressive comments said right to your face from dudes on the range. Nice gun! I had a rail just like that on my rifle eight years ago. That optic is okay for plinking on the range, but if you ever want to get serious about it, you'll want to step it up a bit. Or my personal favorite, hey dickweed, take that tack sack off your gun. I'm trying to teach my daughter how to shoot and I don't feel the need to explain what testicles are to her at age nine. So that about wraps up our thoughts on why building an AR sucks. If you dislike this video, then you probably build AKs and are even more annoying because you think everything is better in Kamiland. Better dead than red, am I right? But if you like this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon page to stay up to date on current and future content. And if you feel like repping some of the Tundra swag, head on down into the link in the description below to our brand new store at Teespring. Thanks for watching Tundra Nation, and you can now find us on Instagram at Tundra Tactical MN.